All right, everyone, so we were taking a moment to find some pictures for our site. We went to those three different uh, websites, and then uh, we downloaded them. Uh, I, I, have my, I have all my pictures saved here so far on my downloads folder in Windows. So I've got an oatmeal cookie, pastries, and a sugar cookie. So I've got some pictures, and I want to upload them into WordPress. And all of that is in my, uh, in my, back in my dashboard. Now, it might have happened to a few people, and I'll mention it here. Maybe you might have, you might have navigated away or closed your windows or whatever, and then you, you left, and like, where's my site? So this is a good reminder, actually, because uh, while we're logged into the site, we're able to go to the dashboard and manage it and so forth, but then if you close your web browser, how do you get back to your site? I have it in the notes somewhere, I think, but uh, the reminder here is, yeah, number three, logging back into your site. So if you lose it and you want to come back to it, I've got it on number two, sheet three. So that's the address, localhost slash WordPress slash WP admin. Uh, so I closed mine, let's say on accident, and I want to get back to it, so it's that address. And that's something you should memorize, because every WordPress site has this sort of format. Let's say I have victor.com. Well, I already also then have built in victor.com slash wp-admin. That's All of them have that on default. And I've got, in this case, in this class, localhost slash WordPress slash wp dash admin. So I closed my site. Maybe you didn't close yours, but if you lost your site, let's get back to it. HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress slash WP dash admin. And then enter. Oh, it logged me out, so no problem. I'll log myself back in. Admin password. So again, this is the stuff that sometimes uh, I forget a bit that we do this here and it uh, goes so smoothly and then you try it at home and, and there's some holes here and there. But um, that's the address, localhost slash w slash wordpress slash wp dash admin. All right, so we, we're back to the dashboard. I've got these pictures and I want to upload them. I want to add them to my site. And so all my pictures and other multimedia is saved in the media section right here. So just like many of the other screens, we have Add New. I want to add new media to my site. Drop files here. So if you can see them on your desktop or wherever and you drag them here, that's one way. Or if you don't see them, you can click Select and then find the pictures. Like I said, mine is in the Downloads folder. Hopefully yours are too. If not, if they're not in Downloads, try the desktop. But basically, there's my picture. If you want to select more than one, you can hold Control on the keyboard in Windows. Click that one, and then Control click that one. You can upload them one at a time, or you can click control and select more than one and then open. Hmm. So I'm uploading my pictures and in my case this one says that picture exceeds the maximum upload site for my site. So I'm uploading way too high quality of an image. Great for print, not good for the web. So okay. Did anyone get that maximum exceeds? Anyone else? One or two people? Yeah, so we don't need the big high quality pictures on your on your website. They're great for print, but not for the web. If you want to remove a picture, we'll do that right now. So, so did everyone upload some pictures? If you want to delete we want to go over to our library. So adding new allows you to upload a new picture, of course. Go to library under media. This will list all your pictures. Let's say I no longer want a certain picture. You can click on it 
And then at the bottom right, in red letters, delete permanently. So at this point we should see a few pictures. I didn't get as many as you perhaps, but I've uploaded some pictures to my media, to my media um, library. I'm going to then use a picture in a post or a page. So I've got some pictures here. I want to edit my home page. It looks boring. It's just a little bit of text. I want to use perhaps one of these pictures. The home page is a page. So we'll go back to pages, all pages. So I've got the home page and the blog page. I want to click edit the home page. This is the uh, the content that I have on my home page. I'll click. Uh, I want to add my picture maybe on the left side over here. So I'm going to click before the text. We've got the button at the top, Add Media. Once I go to Add Media, I have at the top, Upload a File. Well, I've already uploaded files, so I can go to the Media Library. There's my pictures. So if I select that picture, and then on the bottom right, Insert into page. There's my picture. If you click your picture, you get a few options at the top. Align it left, centered, right, no alignment. So I can do that. I can select the picture, align left, and then the text will be on the right and the picture on the left. I made a change to an existing page or post and so I've got the option to update instead of publish. This has already been published. I want to update my changes. So at the top right corner now I'll select update and then visit site and you'll see now that your home page doesn't look as boring as before. There we go. I still don't like that it says home page. We'll edit that in one moment, but at least we want to have a picture. Question? Can I the edit page or add media? Just put in a code instead of a photo. Okay, try this. Uh, do you see on the top right corner of the editing area, do you see here text and visual? Make sure you're on visual because it might be showing you the code, the text code. Yeah, we might have switched it and forgot to switch it back because it's going to remember. So that's visual and text visual and code. Now uh, I'm here on the front end, I see the result, and I also see at the top bar over here, edit page, so that's a quick way to get back to edit a particular page instead of hunting through the menus. 
And then oftentimes you'll also see within the page itself somewhere maybe an edit. So be on the lookout for those shortcuts because we might know how to go back to dashboard and then pages and then edit the page in the list or shortcut I want to go back to edit the home page because I don't want it to say home page on screen. We can edit page. And this is the text that's appearing there, home page, which obviously looks awkward. So we should write something there more meaningful. Like uh, maybe welcome or even more meaningful than that. If you take the SEO class, we we talk about crafting all of the text that we have on our site for maximum SEO and maximum impact. So I would take this time to write something concise here. Maybe um, this is the home page. So from our kitchen to your mouth. Any changes that you make, remember to update. And now instead of it saying home page, it says something more meaningful maybe. The menu still says home. That's nice. So WordPress has a lot of great features. One of them is that it remembers all of your edits. and All of that is being saved in the database. Notice on the top right under Publish box, when you're editing the post or page, this is Revisions. This has been edited, in my case, five times. Maybe yours is three or four or something. But mine has been edited five times. And therefore, I can browse previous versions. And then I can go back. What was changed? What was added? What was removed? I can go all the way back to the very first version when there was nothing on the site. And then the, the next edit after that, I added the first text and so forth. And then change the title. And all of that. So if I want to bring back something like uh, like an undo, like a big undo, I can I can scroll back in the history and then restore this version. I won't because I, I think I'm on the right track, but this is what I'm saying that WordPress very powerful, very popular. If I were doing this in a classic web design software like Dreamweaver, I might have undos, I might have 50 undos but they're not going to span through days or months. This will remember 40 changes from a month ago. So we've talked about some big concepts so far, pages and posts, setting a static home page, working with a menu, images. There's still, of course, plenty more to learn, but what I want to do for these last 15 minutes, 15 minutes of the last lecture is I want to talk about archiving this, saving it and taking it with us so that we don't start over again next time. And then we'll have lab time before that. Any questions? Is this making sense? Remember, keep practicing at, at home. Practice makes perfect. How did you get them from my kitchen to you? Mine's going into it's my, what I wrote is to its company name, and it's two lines. So, you're going to make it smaller text with one line? No, I had to go in and edit it. I had to go in and edit it, cut out some words. Uh, the reason yours goes to the next line is, yeah, the font 
is a little bit larger than I would want. There's no way to edit it with a button anywhere, but there is a way to edit it via code. So those are some things that we'll have to address a little later once we get more experience. But WordPress is really, really good, except when you need to do some tweaks sometimes, because if the theme doesn't provide it or if a widget doesn't provide it, then we have to turn to editing code. But I want to I want to archive my site. I want to save my work. This is going to make an exact copy of the site at this moment, and then if I take it home, I can unfreeze it. I can resurrect it, and I can pick up where I left off at this moment. Or if you don't, and you come back next week, same thing. We'll pick up at this moment. We don't have to start exactly from the beginning again. All of those instructions, we're not done with sheet 3 yet, but all of those instructions are in sheet 4. Let's jump over to sheet 4. Archiving WordPress. It's in two big sections. Archiving it or freezing it, and resurrecting it or redeploying it. The concept, let me explain in general, then we'll do it. We're going to use a plugin. I'll explain what a plugin is in a moment. A plugin to archive our site. It's going to take every file, every picture, every user, everything in the database and save it as two files. One is an installation file <clears throat> to resurrect the site, and one is a zip file with everything, which you never need to unzip. This always happens in these classes. People get these files and then they unzip it for some reason. You don't want to unzip the file. You want to keep the archive zipped. You're going to take those two files with you. So hopefully you brought a USB. Uh, if you didn't, that's okay. I'm going to put my work in the network folder. You can get a copy of my work today or next week when we start over. When we start the day, you can take a copy of my work. But the first part is to archive the site. The second part is then we'll do this together in class, but you can try it at home then we're going to resurrect the site. We do have to create the database one time, but then we resurrect the site and everything's as is. So you're going to get practice again with creating a database. But we need to get a, a plug-in to expand the capabilities, to extend the capabilities of WordPress. WordPress does not have a built-in great archiving feature, unfortunately. So we need to get this plugin, which is an which is an extra app. Plugins are like little apps that add more features to WordPress. And plugins are often made by other companies, not the main, not the official WordPress company, other companies. And some plugins are free, and some plugins are not. And some plugins are free, ninety nine percent, and the one percent is maybe you pay for tech support or extra features. But we're going to use a plugin called Duplicator. And uh, my company uses this with all of the clients that we manage in WordPress. And we use the free one, and it works perfectly. It makes a perfect copy of the site so that we can make a backup and an archive of it. And it works really well. So I'll show you how to use it. In your site, we need to go back to the dashboard. We have a section of plugins, and therefore we want to add a new plugin. We'll select Add New Plugin. This is the main plugin directory. You're going to see a variety of plugins, many good ones that I'll mention as time goes on. Ignore those for the moment. You've got Featured, Popular, Recommended Favorites, and Search. Let's search for Duplicator. D-U-P-L-I-C-A-T-O-R, Duplicator. Search Duplicator, press enter, uh, type it, then press Enter. Then we're going to get the first result here, hopefully, Duplicator by the company Life in the Grid. 
It's compatible with our current version of WordPress. It was updated three weeks ago. It has a perfect five stars, 835 reviews, 500,000 active installations. So it's a very popular theme. This one down here, multi-site clone duplicator, three and a half, four and a half stars, only 14 reviews, only 300 installs. So later on we'll talk more in detail about plugins, but um, there's so many of them out there and they may do so many of the similar th things. Anyone can create a plugin and therefore there might be seven or ten or a hundred versions of the same kind of plugin. How can you tell the good ones? Check the star rating, but then also check the number of reviews. Like this one has a perfect five star rating, just like the one I'm recommending. But the only review seems to come from the author's mother. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll use the one that I mentioned here, Life in the Grid. Perfect five, 835 reviews, half a million installs. There's other ones, maybe you might have had an experience in WordPress before and you found one that you liked, great, keep using it. This is the one that my company uses and we really like it. So select install now. This is going to connect to the WordPress, the official WordPress site. It's going to download it, unzip it, install it, then you have to remember activate it. Again, all of this is in my notes. We found it. We downloaded it afterward. Make sure to activate the plugin. We're going to have a brand new item in the dashboard at the bottom. Duplicator. So it's extending the capabilities of WordPress. Remember to activate it. And now look at it at the bottom here. Duplicator. This it's going to make a perfect copy of your site and therefore it's a backup because what if the server crashes or what if you lose a picture or someone defaces your site this is going to make a perfect copy of it and you can then in part two here bring it back mm -hmm. what we're going to use it for is to save our site here so that when we come back next time we don't start with a blank slate again so on the so if you click on the duplicator link, the duplicator link takes you to the packages screen. The packages are all the archives, the backups. We don't have any packages at the moment. So uh, duplicator click create new right here. So at the top right we've got to create new package. This is going to do a quick check of your server to see if there's any issues. Usually there are not. If there are issues it'll tell you the problem. The issues that I commonly run into are that your site are, is too big it'll tell you if your site is more than 150 megabytes your site might be too big because oftentimes your service providers put limits on on processing power of your site what that means is that duplicator is gonna scan your whole site find every picture compress everything that's gonna take time some service providers only have a limited amount of resources to provide for your site and if the duplicator plugin is taking a long time processing your site your service provider might go daddy might think hey, there's something wrong with the site and shut down the archive so that's why this is going to confirm is your is your site capable of running this duplicator if it's not that might be an issue that can be resolved and it'll tell you how there but i got pass requirements passed. This is going to be, this is going to create a file with that date. So today's date, 2015 and the name of your site. You can change that if you want, but I usually keep that because it's got the date. 
And therefore, if I create a copy tomorrow or next week or in a month, it'll have that day's uh, date. So everything's good here. Let's click Next. It's going to do another scan. It says the server's good, PHP is good, etc. This gives me a preview that my site is currently 24 megabytes. I really don't think I have that much on the site, a home page, a blog, a picture, but the WordPress, everything about WordPress is 24 and a half megabytes. And then the database itself that is storing every word, every picture, every user, everything, it's one megabyte. That's why we cannot just copy this folder to your USB and you've, and you've made a copy because you need to copy every every file and then also the database. Click build. Depending on how much stuff is on your site and other factors, this may take a while or not. I've had this take sometimes, I think the slowest it's been has been like um, five to seven minutes. That's a long time. Usually this takes a minute or less. If it's taking more than a minute, keep waiting and hopefully it, it processes no problem. This one took six and a half minutes. And what we get... Oh yes, six and a half minutes. It's late. Um, what this did then was, now it gives us two files. An installer PHP file and an archive.zip file. Um, what you want to do here now is, if you've got a USB, you, you want to plug that in. And you want to click the installer file, and it'll hopefully pop up to tell you it, it saved it. You know, you, we won't do anything with this um, until next time. But it downloaded this installer file, and then you also need to click the archive. That should hopefully also say that it downloaded the file, the zip file. If I go look at the downloads folder, this is what it gave me. This the zip file with a huge name, 12 megabytes. So those 24 megabytes were compressed down to about 12. And then this installer file, these two things are what you want to take with you. I'm going to create a folder here in the Windows Explorer with today's date and I'm gonna put both of those files in that folder and I'm gonna take that with me. I'm also gonna put it in the network folder so if you'd like a copy of my work up to this point you can have it from the network or if you come next week and you forgot to bring your site you can have a copy of my site. And if you're on your laptop, you can have a copy of mine as well from the network. So I just put my site for safekeeping on the network. You want to take this with you. We're going to end the main lecture in a moment. We're going to do a little lab time in case you need help with this. I know it's a little technical perhaps, but that's my instructions in there. You should be able to hopefully do it. Um, we're going to take some final general questions, and we'll have some lab time. Any general questions on anything we looked at today? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, in my case, those two files went into the my downloads folder. So I went to the downloads folder of computer. You know, I opened a computer window. I found them in the downloads folder, and then I'm going to take both of those files, put them into a folder, and then take them to my USB drive. What if we only had one show up? You should have both. If they did not both show up, just back here, make sure you click them again. Click it to download one and click the other. And then if it shows you on top over here just one, well, click on that little target. That should hopefully open the window and you should see both the zip file and the installer file.
So when we come back next time, we're going to continue some of the items in, in Sheet 3 about themes and more plugins, go on with other concepts, keep getting this basic knowledge of WordPress. There's a whole section we need to go into detail, the settings screen, um, and other concepts, and then we'll go on. And again, once we've laid the foundation in this class, in Part 2, time for e-commerce, selling products, all of that good stuff.